and pay his appointment, his debt. It's appointed unto man wants to die. But he's one of those two olive trees that stand before the Lord of hosts, preserved in heaven. Amen. And God wants to give a special anointing to men. Sometimes he turns those pipes from those olive trees on somebody. Amen. And they become specially anointed. Like the builders of the temple in Zechariah's day. They saw those two olive trees again, Enoch and Elijah. Two men that had never died. They will come back, Mike, and they will pay their appointment. Nobody beats the rap. That is, except the raptured throne. There will be a group that will be living and changed in the twinkling of an eye. Praise God. The dying and the translation will take place so fast, it'll be in the twinkling of an eye. But nevertheless, it will be a change. It will be a transformation. It will be a transfer from here to there. Amen. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen, moved with fear, prepared an ark the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. He had faith. Yes, he had faith. <clears throat> Amen. A few years ago, a man came along and taught that they didn't have faith in the Old Testament. And then I heard uh, uh, a preacher come along and... Uh, say that very thing right here behind the pulpit. Well, in a camp meeting. Maybe here in this pulpit, too. Amen. Preacher preached a lot for us. Said they didn't have faith in the Old Testament. He read that in a book. Amen. He needed to read the book of Hebrews. <laughs> Chapter 11. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. That takes faith. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundation whose builder and maker is God. Through faith Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore, innumerable. Now hear this. These all died in faith. My title for a few moments tonight, not long. It's not the dying, but how. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth and I can't feel at home in this world anymore because I'm a stranger. I'd like to go home. But where is it? Anywhere I go, it's not home anymore. All the folks that made it home when I was a child are not around anymore. They're gone. And about one day is all I can stand. Two days. Three, four. If I get good and busy, I might be able to tough it out a week, but it's not home. No more. What happened to them? They died. 
In the past few years in my ministry, uh, since I've been to highway, we've bid farewell to some mighty men that sought God and walked with God. And some of them had uh, good tips, you know, what to do to be healthy. Brother Ralph Cook, he ate canned grapefruit every morning. Amen. And uh, that's the way he kept his weight down. But he's been dead for years. Man of God. Man of faith. Amen. And uh, all kind of people I've known through time, you know, they, they, boy, they, they really had to, they really had it down pat about this holistic stuff, medicine, you know. Amen. They know what you ought to eat, and they know what you, what you ought to drink, and they took their vitamins and they took their minerals, and and uh, probably they did improve their quality of life and might have bought them. Bought themselves a few more minutes, Brother Jerry Wayne. <laughs> but I know of a bunch of them's been dead for a while. And somebody else is peddling the capsules. It's supposed to help you live longer and enjoy better health. Amen. Dead. They died. Lester Roloff did a lot of preaching over the radio about eating right, wouldn't eat no meat, no pork especially, no meat at all, amen, high on fish, so boy, they serve fish a lot, amen, health foods, boy, 70 years old, took off in a storm, crashed, he's been gone for years, he died, amen. He was a specialist when it come to having a healthy body at old age. And was probably right about a lot of things. He didn't buy him very many more years. Might have had a little better quality of life. But he died. I'm not saying you ought not to do that. I'm not saying you ought not to take your vitamins. I'm not saying you ought to do ought not to do that which is better for you to do and than than uh, by amen faith and experimentation you'll find out the best diet for you. You'll find out whether you're allergic to <coughs> bananas or not. You'll find out whether you're allergic to <coughs> anything or not amen we've had preachers at our house allergic to eggs that's a terrible tragedy to be allergic to eggs but everything and that doctor gave me my glucose test and it went clear out of sight and his little old checking machine wouldn't even check it it took a lot took an hour for it to get back down to 300 and he said, your system just will not stand sugar. You're allergic to sugar. Amen. Well, God answered my wife's prayer. She had been praying for the Lord to sweeten me up for years. And she overdone it. Amen. That's what Uncle Bud said when God told him. He said, Uncle Bud, you got sugar. He said, well, bless God that I've been praying for the Lord to sweeten me up for years. Amen. Praise God. Ah, yes. I care what you do, but this is an adage that we use. I don't care what you do. I really do, but I don't. Figure that out if you can. It don't matter what it really means. You. Amen. It don't matter what you do, you're going to die. Amen. Some of the best men I ever knew are dead. Man, I thought, what in the world will happen? Brother Fred Hatfield killed an automobile accident. Died on his 40th birthday. He didn't get to celebrate that black 40. My son-in-law celebrated a few years ago. And they bought him everything in black. And they threw him a big party. But Brother Fred never got to celebrate. Forty. Some of the most praying people in the world died young. 
Some of the greatest ministries were short ministries. Amen. David Brainyard, who was the apostle to the American Indians of the Northeast in New England, and brought many of them to God before unwitting, ignorant men came along and slaughtered them. David Brainyard prayed and sought God for them. They said, don't go near this tribe because they're very bad. We've not been able to approach them. David Brainyard said, I feel led of God to go. So he took his gear and pitched his tent within the sound of their village. He didn't know, but they was watching his tent to kill him, the young preacher that cared for the American Indians. Amen. The next day he folded up his tent, amen, and started into the village and was welcomed with open arms. He didn't know, but they'd been watching his tent. They saw when that rattlesnake crawled into his tent and coiled to strike within striking distance of the sleeping preacher and then uncoil and crawl away into the forest. And they said, there's something different about this man. God's, the great spirit, has preserved him. And the next day they received him with open arms. Amen. He preached the gospel to them and won them to God. Oh, how effective David Brainyard was for God. Amen. He courted the president of Princeton's daughter, Jonathan Edwards' daughter. And sweet Jerusha planned her wedding. But Jerusha would never have her wedding. Her young preacher husband, at an early age, consumption set in. He had such a burden for the American Indians that he'd fall on his face in the snow and the blood-stained spittle from his consumptive lungs would stain the whited snow as he prayed for the American Indians. That sainted man of God, so young, just a lamb, so to speak, at the age of 29 years, lay a dying. And Jerusha wept. And David Brainyard died at the age of 29 years. But what a legacy he left behind. What an example he set. It's not the dying, but it's the how. We've got a debt to pay. Amen. As a <clears throat> life of a flower, the song says, as a breath or a sigh, so the years fly away, then at last we must die. What legacy will we leave behind? Mark Barker preached a while ago about the legacy that Eunice and uh, Lois left behind. For their son and grandson, Timothy. Praise God. And all he had to do to have a fire was stir up the gift. Stir it up, praise God. What a legacy they left behind, praise God. Paul speaks in the past tense. The spirit that dwelt, that means they were gone. And now, Timothy, the young preacher, is on his own. There's no mother left to pray for him. There's no grandmother left to pray for him. Paul knew them both. Maybe helped officiate their funeral. I don't know. But two sainted mothers died. And now Paul's in jail and Timothy is left to fend for himself. And what a legacy he will leave. First and second Timothy. God's love letter to Timothy. From Paul. Anointed by the Spirit. How about that? Oh, what a legacy to leave behind. Timothy's long been dead. Peter's long been dead. Oh, they say that Mary was caught up into heaven. 
and 1854 they proclaimed her deity alongside the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But it's a lie. Amen. Mary hasn't been translated yet. She died. Mary is not interceding up there for you and I because she died. Amen. Just like you and I will. The only intercessor we have is Jesus. The great mediator between God and man. And that's the one we want to press our dying hand in. That's the pillow that we want to press our dying head upon. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Jesus. The one who died for you and me. These all died. Amen. I was riding along with a friend of mine in Thayer, Missouri, who had long since uh, <clears throat> gave up the faith once delivered to the saints and went off after a new wind and a new doctrine, embraced a new faith. He became what is known today in Pentecostal circles as a Branhamite. I was driving along with him. I said, we all appreciated Brother Branham in his best days but I said he wasn't greater than Peter and Paul and he looked at me as serious as a heart attack and said yes he was too greater than Peter greater than Paul I just got this to say about it he died in a car wreck in Dallas Texas amen and he's gone amen he's dead Boy, several years ago, there's some guys got such a revelation from God, they run out of gimmicks, and so they created some. And so they had crosses of blood on their head. Anybody can get one if you scratch yourself deep enough in the right direction. Amen. They had crosses of blood on their head, oil on their hands. And if you had enough faith, you would not never die. But oh well, Jaggers... And pop play well, or pop off, amen, and A.A. And, uh, uh, a. Allen, and all of them that went off after that for a little while, amen, they're all dead. Amen. They said Paul didn't have faith, or he'd still be around. <laughs> Can you imagine an upstart in our generation saying Paul didn't have faith? Amen. That's like some of these guys here saying Abraham didn't have faith. Sarah didn't have faith. Noah didn't have faith. Amen. Hey, the Bible said plain and simple. These all died in faith. That's a way to die. Die in the faith. We can lay down and go to sleep in peace. We die in faith. D.L. Moody said, don't weep for me. He said, this is my coronation day. I've waited for it for years as a train wound its way through the West back to Chicago carrying its precious cargo. That preacher that had preached the gospel to thousands, his coronation took place. D.L. Moody died. Finney died. Wesley died. Charles, that writer of songs, died. Amen. Spurgeon, the golden tongue, died. Joseph Parker died. They had a little contest going on. Amen. Spurgeon smoked black cigars in his early ministry, and Joseph Parker preached against smoking cigars. Joseph Parker went to the theater, and so Spurgeon preached against going to theaters. Heard anything like that in our holiness circles today? Amen. You kill my dog, I'll kill your cat. Amen. You say something bad about me, I've got something on you too. Bible said don't return evil for evil. Oh, by the way, Joseph Parker's dead and Spurgeon's dead. Amen. Look at their tombstone and tell me the difference. They're both dead. It's how, folks. Amen. 
Out here on this hill behind the Seventh-day Adventist church on old Mr. Lyon's property. Mr. Lyon died the other day. He paid the debt. Amen. So all his property belongs to the park now, except the part that he will to the woman that took care of him a lot. And she said she wanted it for the Catholic church. Amen. Mr. Lyon's dead. He didn't die too well if I know anything, he didn't leave much of a testimony. Amen. An old college professor full of unbelief, no respect for the ministry, or anybody else. Amen. Cussed, drank, as long as he was able. Amen. And died in a rest home up here on the hill. Mr. Lyon dead. But the park service inherited a cemetery out there. I've been through it. Vandals have gone through it and pushed down most of the tombstones, but there was one larger tombstone left standing. It was a preacher's tombstone. So-and-so, Reverend so-and-so, died at the age of 29 years. He was beloved of his congregation. Most of you have a longer ministry than that. Amen. But it's not the length. It's how. Amen. Some preachers would have been better off if they'd have died 15 years earlier. They'd have left a better legacy behind. But imprinted on the minds of people that knew them in their latter days, they vacillated. They apostatized. They went back. They went against the things they once taught. The very things they once preached. They no longer preached anymore. Amen. They too are dead. It's not the dying, but it's the how. The Bible said it's appointed unto man wants to die, but after this. What? 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 Judgment? You mean death's not all there is to it? You mean somewhere, sometime, we're going to put on personality and body enough and sight enough and ears enough and senses enough to stand in the judgment and hear our record read? That's why God dropped that plumb line while we was living. So we could straighten up. Amen. Hey, would you want your walls of your new house leaning like that? Huh? Would you like it? What would you do? Amen. If Randy came along and remodeled your house and left your wall like that. Say, Randy, see this? My wall's not straight. And you'd make Randy, amen, fix that wall. Straighten it up. Amen. You get that plumb line out. Yeah, that's better, Randy. Amen. I want my wall straight. But what if they're leaning this way? That's out. Say, Randy... I don't want my walls leaning out. And Randy comes along and he fixes it this way. And they're all leaning in. Amen. Randy, that's not square. Amen. And the final time of judgment comes. The inspector comes. The man is going to loan the money for the house. And he puts that plumb line up and that wall ain't straight. Amen. Uh, I rebottled the basement of the church at Kansas City. Amen. And since then they've sold it to a group of Orientals and they they have taken over the what was once the Silverwood Full Gospel Tabernacle. But the walls of petition down the middle that I run to, I just run them even with the outside walls that I didn't know it. But the basement walls wasn't straight. They was leaning out. 
like that. I measured from the top of the basement over to the middle, and from the bottom of the basement over to the middle and struck a chalk line and run the wall down through there. I was in a hurry, Jim. Amen. But if you go in that church where the Orientals are, you don't have to look very close if you're a carpenter to see that the walls of the Sunday school rooms are leaning in. That's because the basement walls was that way. And I fixed them with a basement wall. I should have made them independent, but I was in too big a hurry. Amen. Now tell me, amen, do you want them straight or do you want them crooked? You know, anybody, just about anybody will let anything get by in religion today. Amen. It don't matter what kind of shape it is. Any old thing goes. But there's a judgment coming. Amen. After this, the judgment. Praise God. That is the big thing. The old gentleman that was inspector the time I built that house on Elk Creek Road, it's still there. Amen. I got a local man to do the wiring that J.C. Fletcher recommended because I figured a local man knew all the local codes and what goes in Kentucky won't pass in Ohio. Amen. So I had a local man to wire. He pulled that wire out of them boxes and it was curled through that attic just like that. All the way through that attic. Amen. And all those wires was curled like that. They wasn't pulled out straight off the roll and stapled down. Amen. He just pulled them out and here they are just the way they come out of the box. Amen. You couldn't have pulled them straight with a bulldozer. Amen. And that old man walked in there and he said, That's the sloppiest wiring job I ever saw. Well, it kind of hurt my feelings. I'd work hard, you know, and I wanted to hurry and get the drywall going, get the insulation going. He said, I'm not passing any more sloppy wiring jobs. And I, he said, We've got to go by the book. And that gave me my key. I said, yes, we got to go by the book. And some of these days, God's going to judge you and me. And when he does, he's going to judge us by the book. The old man who's no longer around anymore said, yeah, he said, that's the one. His whole attitude changed. I called him about it in a day or so, and he said, run that. Uh, wire for the uh, separate wire for the garbage disposal and he said cover it up I mellowed him up when I told him that's not an attic and ain't nobody going to be walking up there and ain't nobody else going to see it and it's still that way amen and wires spiraling through them trusses amen it's still that way if you could see it <laughs> Amen. I know it's not the best, but it don't hurt one thing. It don't hurt anybody. It don't change the quality of the house. But in the last days, God's going to judge everybody by the book. By the book. Amen. A few years ago, a family took up here and started a church here. We was laughing outside, and I just bought a Cadillac, that gray one that I was driving. Brother, brother Lucas had a, a an Amish man to tan me a sheepskin because it had leather seats, and hey man, he had me a sheepskin with a with all the wool on it, tan, and gave it to me. Amen. And I had it there just a winter time. The seats is cold. I'd sit on that sheepskin and that sheep fleece, and we was laughing outside, you know. And they was talking about coming here to church. And I reached in and took that sheepskin out and hold it up. I said, this is what I do to folks that don't do right. Amen. 
They're not here anymore. Amen. They're gone. And they probably need skinning. But I'm not going to skin them. The judgment will take care of that. Amen. A lady all mad walked up to all the rebels and said, Where in the Bible does it say to skin the sheep? He said, I'm not skinning sheep. I'm skinning goats. And he said, the rest of you sheep, I'm just combing the cockleburrs out of your hair. Amen. It, it's not how long we live or how soon we die, but it's how we die and what we leave behind. Leave behind, Sue Cole used to say. What will I leave behind after I leave for worlds unknown? What will I leave behind? After this, the judgment. Some of you, the most praying saints, the most wonderful people you ever know, are already gone. Count the years. How much older they was than you. And you may have that many. And you may not. But on the average, you may. But we scarcely started out till we started to leave. And we may leave tomorrow. We may depart and leave morning loved ones behind. But will we leave something to inspire them to a greater life in God? Or to fill them with blackness and unbelief and doubt? And say, what's the use? Brother Fred Hatfield died at the age of 40 years from that automobile accident. One of the main sisters in the church sat in the back of the church and shook her head and said out loud, It's gone, it's gone, it's gone. She's been gone a while. But the Harbor Lights Temple is still there. Life will go on. It may not be the same. It may not be the same quality. But after all, that's our choice, isn't it? That's up to us. If we have a spiritual church, an overcoming church, a powerful church, an anointed church, it's, it depends on whether we go on with God or not. Amen. How about it? It's the how. As a life of a flower, as a breath, or a sigh, so the years fly away. Then at last, we must die. Stand with me. Father, we've shouted the victory and the praises of Jesus tonight. But there are some that have taken these moves of God and this outpouring of the Spirit for granted. And they've decided to, in a take it or leave it situation, to leave it. they become good critics, but they haven't become good prayer warriors. They become good experts when it comes to giving advice and counsel and uh, joking comment. But they haven't learned how to get a hold of God for themselves and then pray the prayer of faith for others.